Welcome to another episode of Facebook Live. Let me just say that it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be back with you. It's been some time and uh, I want to reconnect and reestablish uh, an ongoing, consistent uh, weekly session with you just to give you some, some things that I think may help you. And so what I want to talk about today is the importance of understanding the journey of recovery after an affair. For instance, if you have had an affair in your relationship and you've gone through uh, what would be considered a healthy, productive counseling process where there's been restoration, at some point, the sessions come to an end. At some point, you've covered the specifics of what's happened and you've gone through a healing process. There may have been forgiveness. You're still working on trust. But once the sessions end, the journey does not stop because you haven't reached the final destination. You have to realize that the journey is a continuous journey and it may be a non-ending journey to get to your ultimate destination. Well, what is the destination? The destination is fulfillment. The destination is a healthy foundational relationship. So in essence, if you've come from pain island and you're trying to get to pleasure island, it's important that you and your partner discuss what pleasure island looks like. But along the way, I think it's critically important to realize that it's a journey that may be comprised of some turbulence. There are going to be ups and downs. There are going to be bumps and bruises. There are going to be pit stops. There are going to be flat tires. There are going to be time when you have to pull over and gas up again because you've run out of all steam or fuel. And so it's a journey where there's constant course corrections being made. And your commitment to being the best version of yourself is critically important. You have to understand, your relationship will never, ever be the same again. It can never go back to the way it was. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because, in essence, the affair wasn't the problem to begin with. The affair exposed a problem that may have either existed in you as the individual or your partner, if they were the one who were unfaithful, or it exposes issues that existed in the relationship. So with a magnifying glass on things that either you or your partner or both of you were oblivious to, it allows you to see things from a new perspective and a new vantage point. And so therefore, it becomes your responsibility to rebuild, recreate, restructure, how about reevaluate the entire relationship and to put new building blocks in that create a long lasting, sustainable relationship. And so it never, it, you'll never get to a point where uh, you're no longer going to have to invest and engage in effective conversation, meeting each other's emotional needs, um, really understanding the importance of having empathy and sympathy as your partner may continue to go through triggers. Now, the thing about triggers is you never know when it will come. A trigger can be based upon a smell, a color, driving down the highway and passing a particular exit. It can be a movie, a television show. Uh, it can be a dialogue or an interaction that you observe from a distance. There's so many things that will pull a trigger out of an individual and connect it to something that has happened in the past. And so you have, you have to be sensitive to a partner who continues to have triggers. Now, the work must be done by both partners because both of you have a responsibility. So the, the, the unfaithful partner has his or her role to play in rebuilding the trust, okay, um, honoring the marriage with integrity and intentionality in terms of what one does and knowing that this is a journey ahead. Now, the betrayed partner has his or her work to do as well. They have to make a decision to begin to manage their emotions, to control their thoughts, to not, to not allow their triggers to overwhelm them and, and control them, but they have to have a proper management of these particular triggers. They have to make a decision to begin to, to give their partner a certain level of, of freedom within the relationship because if a violation has occurred and one has been found out and discovered and you've gone through a process of recovery, then there's got to be some sense of freedom that both of you have where you have honesty and integrity and you do nothing any longer to violate that relationship. And so trust is critically important in order to move forward. And so I have seen many couples who have had better relationships after the discovery of the affair than what they had before. But one of the things that typically sets a couple back 
is if we're constantly talking about what has happened again and again and again. Now, understand there is a season for that. There is a season where you should have a thousand and one conversations or where you possibly ask the same question a thousand and one different times because you may need clarity. You may need to have a proper understanding. And hearing it the first time didn't do it. Hearing it the second time, you picked up with something a little bit different. But that third time, that really sealed the deal. Well, let me give you a technique that I think will tremendously help you. If you have <clears throat> a phone, you should use the power of technology. So as you're having these deep conversations where you're talking about the facts and the feelings, the what, the when, the how, and the why of the affair, take out your phone and go to your recording app and record the conversation. Because the fact of the matter is, you only retain 10% of what you hear anyway. So the other 90% went in one ear right out the other, and you didn't catch it. And so oftentimes you find yourself engaging in the same conversations, and it may wear your partner down because they're like, hey, how many, how many times are we going to have to discuss this? Didn't we talk about this already? I already answered that question. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yeah, yes, I did. No, you did not. And so it becomes a tug of war. And so the reality is the question may have been answered. It may have been answered effectively. The challenge is this. When I'm hearing something and I'm listening with emotional ears, I may zone in on one particular thing that was said, and then everything else becomes words in the background that don't even process. And so I'm missing all of this information because I'm zoned in on a particular thing. And so that is why it is critically important to record your conversations, because guess what? You can rewind the tape and you can listen to the conversation a thousand and one times in order to get better clarity and understanding on what was said. So rather than re-engaging in another conversation where you're talking about the same things, now you're asking better questions. Now you're asking more intelligent questions because you had the time to process the information that was shared in the first initial conversation. After you've gained an understanding of the facts, you then may want to transition into the why. A lot of times when information is given, the, the hurt partner or the betrayed partner just doesn't get it. One of the reasons why the, un, the betrayed partner may not get it is because they're listening to the answer and they're processing the information through their own filter, through their own wiring. So if you, in essence, want to understand why would you be unfaithful and the answer is given, if you have within your heart and your soul nothing remotely that would ever lead you to ever cheat or be unfaithful with your partner, it's hard to receive the answer that's being given because you're processing the information through your wiring, through your tendencies, through your belief system. And that's where it becomes problematic. You can't interpret what's being said through your belief system. You're trying to get into the mind and the understanding of the unfaithful partner to figure out why they would do what they would do. Not that it justifies what's been done, not that it makes it okay, but you're trying to understand the mind and the heart of your partner that led up to this incident so that you two can collectively figure out what can be done to prevent such things from happening again. And oftentimes, when a partner is unfaithful, they may understand from a very simplistic perspective as to what they did and why they did what they did. But oftentimes there are deeper roots uh, that are attached to behavior. And it takes somebody, uh, a third party, a counselor, a mentor, a marriage coach, an infidelity recovery specialist to help you connect the dots. Because through self-discovery, you begin to understand deeper things that have contributed to the behaviors that you become oblivious or unconscious to. And so you're asking yourself, why can't I shake this? Why do I keep going down this path? Why do I keep making the same mistakes? Well, sometimes you need someone else to help you figure that thing out. And so this is where counseling comes in. This is where we're rewinding the tape and listening to the messages come in. This is where writing down your questions and presenting it to your partner, giving them some time to think it through. Not that they're making up answers, not that they're just gonna say what they believe you want to hear, 
but some questions stump uh, the person who you're asking, and they have no clue, even though they were fully engaged in the experience. And so some things take a little bit of time to process to come up with something that makes sense. And so what I'm speaking to here is really the uh, full disclosure process. And for some couples, it lasts for a couple of days, some a couple of weeks, unfortunately for some a couple of months and even years because there's no system put in place. And so what can really drain a relationship and cause more of an emotional disconnect and give up your will, your desire, and your fight to want to work it out is when you're constantly bombarded again and again and again and again with the affair, though it may have been a year or two or 10 years uh, behind you. And that is because you didn't effectively, collectively go through this process together. And so what happens is residue carries on and spills into the relationship and really uh, does a horrible job of helping you have the desire to reconnect with your partner. So this is where it requires you giving your all. This is where it requires you, you putting your best foot forward and digging deep and going into the trenches and not putting your tippy toe in the water and testing it, but diving in head first and getting wet. Because it is not until you become fully emerged or and it's so be, because it is not until you become fully submerged in the process can you really deal with the true root cause of, of, of what has happened. When you begin to do that, healing begins to take place. Now remember, the truth hurts. So there's no denying the truth. If you deny the truth, you're creating more of an insecurity in your partner. You're creating more of a reason why they should not trust you because inherently they feel like you're holding back. You're keeping something from them. You're not being transparent because you don't want to further hurt the partner by sharing these details because you know and they know that the truth ultimately hurts. And while that is true, I will also say that the truth also heals. And oftentimes, uh, betrayed partners say as bad as what you did actually was, what hurt even more is the fact that you've denied the truth from me for so long. So not only were you telling a lie, you were living a lie. And not only do they question that incident, but now they question the entire relationship. Now they wonder, well, who are you? I don't think I've ever known you. Is anything that we've had ever been real? They question everything because you've, hold, you've held on to this truth for so long that they're not sure what to believe. And that's what makes the recovery process so difficult. And so rather than tiptoeing and tap dancing, through this process and being so careful and meticulous about what you say and how you say it, it's almost taking on the approach of, uh, I gotta rip this bandaid off, but I wanna cause as least pain as possible. So I'm gonna slowly tear this thing off. But as you're slowly tearing it off, you're causing more pain and agony because it's ripping the hair out of the skin and pulling the skin from the bone. And it's a really painful experience as opposed to when you just rip that sucker off there's an instant pain, but immediately the pain goes away. And so when we slow roll the process, when bits of truth come out little by little over the course of time, you're forcing your partner to relive the pain all over again. And even though the information that you're, that's now coming out is old to you, it's new to them. And you're forcing them to relive it. And so as they relive it, the negative thoughts, the negative emotions begin to embody them and consume them and now they're right back at that moment when the affair first occurred. And so to avoid that and to alleviate that from your experience, make it up in your mind that we're going to go all in and deal with the goriness, the ugliness, the darkness of what has happened so that we can get out and come out on the other side. And so I critically encourage you, encourage you to go all in and to have discussions that are healing. Have discussions that move you forward. And if you have to have them a few times, have them as often as possible with assistance and tools that'll help get you to the other side, okay? So I want you to have, let me make up a word, stick to itivism. I don't want you to give in, to cave in, to quit because it's taking too long or it's just too hard and if there's a way to avoid the pain, there's no way to avoid the pain because what was done was painful. And so you've got to be willing to go through a process of pain. Think about it. Whenever you're healing an aspect of your body, 
It's a painful process. If you've broken a leg, strained an arm, pulled a muscle, the recovery process can be just as painful, if not more painful, than the initial incident that took place. So there's no way to avoid the pain. Avoiding the pain makes matters worse and creates more distrust and can ultimately lead to divorce, which is the last thing that you ultimately want. So go all in. Be courageous, knowing that you're going to come out on the other side and we're going to get through this no matter what. And when you do that, you win every single time.